in the last class we have discussed reflexive spaces we have shown that if any two nonlinear spaces are isometrically isomorphic and one of them is reflexive then other one is also reflexive today i will continue the topic today we are going to prove a theorem which states that a closed subspace of a reflexive banach space is reflexive let us prove this theorem that x together with norm b a reflexive banach space over the field k and let y be a closed subspace of x and we have to show that y is reflexive we define a mapping t from x star to y star as tf of y is equal to f of y for every y in y and for every f in x star and since uh, we are defining a mapping from x star to y star so for f in x star tf must be an element of y star and um, that means tf is a mapping from y to k and tf is a bounded linear functional on y and so here we note that for each y in y tf image of y is equal to f of y and since f is a mapping from x to k and y is a subset of x so f of y is an element of k so tf maps every element of y to an element of k so tf is a mapping from y to k and we also note that tf is a restriction of f to y because f uh, maps every element of x to f of x and um, since y is a subset of x um, so um, here uh, f in tf maps every element of y to f of y and so uh, we note that Uh, tf is nothing but the restriction of f to y and uh, since we know that uh, restriction of a continuous function is continuous restriction of a linear function is linear and so tf is a bounded linear functional on y and that means tf is nothing but f restricted to y which belongs to y star so tf Uh, is an element of y star so this mapping is well defined here we also note that t is on to because for any y for any g in y star if we take any element of the codomain here g belongs to y star there exists uh, f belongs to x star such that f of x is equal to 0 for every x um, belongs to x minus y and f of y is equal to g of y for every y in y so clearly this mapping is on to now we show that t is linear for any alpha beta in k and for f g in x star for any y in y uh, we know that t image of alpha f plus beta g of y is equal to by definition of t alpha f plus beta g of y and that means alpha f of y plus beta g of y and this is equal to alpha times f of y plus beta times g of y and then by definition of t we can write it as alpha times tf of y plus beta times tg of y and this can be written as alpha t of f plus beta t of g of y and this is true for any y in y and so this implies that t image of alpha f plus beta g is equal to alpha times tf plus beta times t of g thus we have shown that t is linear now we show that t is bounded for each f in x star norm of tf is equal to by definition supremum of the set mod of tf of y divided by norm of y where y belongs to space y and y is a non zero vector and this is equal to supremum of the set mod of f of y since tf of y is nothing but f of y so here we have 
mod of f of y divided by norm of y where y belongs to a space y is a non-zero vector and this by definition this is equal to norm of f and so norm of tf is equal to norm of f for every f in x star so we have shown that t is bounded now we define a mapping t1 from y double star to x double star as t1 psi of f is equal to psi of tf for every psi in y double star and for every f in x star let me make it more clear as um, psi belongs to y double star and t1 is a mapping from y double star to x double star so t1 psi must be a, ma a mapping from x star to k and so t1 psi must map an element of uh, an element f of x star to an element of k so t1 psi of f is equal to psi of tf here since tf belongs to y star and psi is a mapping from y star to k so psi of tf must be an element of k so t1 psi is a mapping from x star to k now it remains to show that t1 psi is an element of x double star that means we have to show that t1 psi is a bounded linear functional on x star as psi from uh, y star to k is a bounded linear functional and we have shown that t from x star to y star is a bounded linear function and so their composition that is psi t from x star to k is a bounded linear functional on x star and so t1 psi that is equal to psi t this belongs to x double star and so this mapping is well defined as it is given that x is reflexive so we know that natural embedding is an isometric isomorphism since for psi in y double star t1 psi belongs to x double star and pi x from x to x double star is on to and so um, there exists some since this mapping is on to so for every element of x double star there must be an element in x and so there exists some element x naught in x such that pi x of x naught uh, is equal to t1 psi since pi x is on to so for uh, an element t1 psi in x double star there must be an element in x which uh, we are denoting here by x naught and so pi x of um, x naught is equal to t1 psi and so uh, x naught is equal to pi x inverse of t1 psi now we claim that x naught belongs to y if possible let x naught belongs to x minus y as y is a closed subspace of x then by application of Hahn Banach theorem we know that there exists a bounded linear functional on x say f such that f of x naught is not equal to 0 and f image of the set y is singleton 0 that means f uh, maps every element of subspace y to 0 and we mark it as 4 so by definition of t we know that t f of y is equal to f of y and since f of y is equal to 0 for every y in y whereby t f is equal to 0 and since tf is an, an element of y, y star and psi is a mapping of, from y star to k so and psi is a bounded linear functional so psi maps tf to 0 and by 3 by 3 here um, for ready reference i have written t1 psi of f is equal to psi of tf for psi in y double star and f in x star 
So psi of Tf is equal to 0 implies that T1 psi of F is equal to 0. And uh, if we use 3, uh, which is uh, pi x of x0 is equal to T1 psi. So we replace T1 psi by pi x of x0 and then we have pi x of x0 of f is equal to 0. And this we know that uh, this is equal to phi x naught of f and so phi of x naught f of f is equal to 0 and then by definition of phi x naught this is equal to f of x naught and so f of x naught is equal to 0 and we know that uh, by 4 f of x naught is not equal to 0 but here we get f of x naught is equal to 0 which is a contradiction so our assumption must be wrong. So x naught must belong to y. Thus we have shown that for psi in y double star, there exists x naught, which is equal to pi x inverse of t1 psi uh, belongs to space y. And uh, we want to show that um, um, image of uh, x naught is psi uh, under natural embedding on y. Let g belongs to y star then as t is on to so there exists f in x star such that f restricted to y is equal to g and by 1 we know that t f of y is equal to f of y for every y in y and since f restricted to y is equal to g so here f of y is equal to g of y for every y in y and so we have shown that t image of f is equal to g. Now psi image of g is equal to psi image of tf because we have shown that g is nothing but tf and this is equal to by definition of t1 t1 psi of f and since pi x of x0 is equal to t1 psi. So here we can write pi x of x0 of f. And this we know that pi x of x0 is phi x0. So we have phi x0 of f. And by definition of phi x0, this is equal to f of x0. And since x0 belongs to y and f restricted to y is equal to g, so f of x0 is equal to g of x0 and this is equal to phi x0 of g for each g belongs to y star and so we have shown that phi x0 is equal to psi whereby pi y of x0 is equal to um, phi x0 is equal to psi so we have um, uh, shown that for psi in y double star there exists x naught such that pi y of x naught is equal to psi. That means pi y is on 2. Hence y is reflexive. 